Welcome back guys. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make these massive bird houses. Let's dive into this. Okay, so we're gonna start by cutting our main parts. Like always, I'm gonna throw that part list into the description. And like we have discussed in previous videos, fence pickets are no longer full 5 8 inch thick. So I'm starting to sand them down or plane them down to one half of an inch thick. That way everything can be uniform. And when it comes to the part on cutting the shingles, we'll cover that separately. And here we are, the main parts for the build. Now let's go ahead and prep these parts for assembly. Parts A through F are going to be the fronts and the backs of the birdhouse, so there will be two of each. And that's all that I'm doing here is putting a 35 degree angle on parts B through F. And the measurements that you will find in the description are going to be for tip to tip measurements. And then we're going to put that same 35 degree angle on divider parts I through M. Again, this will be tip to tip measurements. And I just laid out the backs and the divider so you can see where we're going with this. You can already see the shape of the birdhouse. And now I'm going to make a template for all of my door openings. The openings are two and seven eighths inches tall by two and a half inches wide. And I'm starting the arch at two inches up. You can easily mark all of this out yourself or if you decide to buy the plans, there will be templates for all of the jigs that you see made in this video. Any parts that we are cutting that has an arch to it, a sander is going to be your best friend. It will make those nice and smooth. And especially when it comes to cutting the shingles, because there's going to be a lot of them, if you have a little belt sander or a big belt sander, it will make your life 10 times easier. So with a door template made, let's go ahead and lay out the front and get those doors marked. And I want each door to be offset with the one above it. Now see what I'm doing here. I'm taking notes. I'm writing everything down. You need to do this on any of your projects. Write down anything that you do. Now I'm just making a straight line on center because all of these parts are going to be based off center. And then I'm going to put a center mark on my door template as well as this little two inch spacer that I've made. And to start with, I'm going to take my center mark of the two inch spacer and line it up with the center mark of my bottom board. Mark both sides and that will give me the edges that I need for my door spacing. Basically, this is allowing me to have all of my doors two inches apart. So when we move up to the next level, we're going to start with the center mark on our door jig. And then on your center mark between each level, alternate between your spacer and your door outline. And we'll continue to do this until we have reached the top. Now the top we're going to be doing a little different. So for part F, we are only going to be tracing out a portion of this jig. Let's say we'll drop it down about an inch, whatever looks right to you. In the end, it's really not going to matter because the cornice or the gingerbread, that's what I'm going to call it, will actually cover this hole up. Now that we have all of our doors traced, it's time to break out the jigsaw and get to work. And here's a tip for cutting these out. Whenever you're selecting your jigsaw blade, find one that is very narrow. Just like in bandsaw blades, the thickness or the width of the blade itself determines the radius that you can cut with that. I think that the blade that I'm using here is actually considered a scrolling blade. And then you'll just continue this on all of your parts A through F that are the front boards. Now with all of those cut, we'll give it a quick sand and we'll head over to the 720 for some pocket holes. Part F, the front board, this one here. This one we will not be putting pocket holes in. It's just too fragile. And with the bit set up, the one that just fell out, at one half of an inch, we want to put a pocket hole in the center of every two inch section and then one on each end. And when you're done, all of your front boards will look something like this. And for the backboard F, since it's not as fragile because we did not put a door in it, we can drop a couple of pocket holes in that and continue for the remaining back parts. Now for the shingles. The shingles can be made several different ways. I'm going to show you a way to do it on the table saw. You can do this on a bandsaw by busting your material in half into quarter inch sections, or if you're not comfortable with either, you can just buy a quarter inch plywood. So I'm showing you with this method a full shingle cut. I've set my blade height at two and a quarter, and I've set my depth at one quarter. So try to pick out the closest picket that you have to five eighths. 
Since I'll be cutting these boards vertical, I'm going to be using a feather board to assist me with this. By cutting it this way before ripping it, it will still give you an inch of material in the middle. This will eliminate any risk of kickback from making such a tight cut against the fence. So I'll make this cut to both edges of this board and then we're ready to rip it down. But first, while our saw is still set up, let's go ahead and cut our half shingles. I'm just dropping the blade down to an inch and an eighth. Now once all of those are cut, now we can go ahead and rip it down. So to do that, we'll just lower our blade, go ahead and set our fence at two and a quarter for the full size shingles, and an inch and an eighth for the half shingles. This will allow you to get four shingles out of every three and three quarters inch of material. So with our shingle stock cut, we'll go ahead and cut the shingle lengths. So the shingle lengths are going to be three and three quarters. Now you can design your shingles any way that you would like. Of course, you know I like mine a little different. So I just measure down a half of an inch and then find center and then make my arch. And I'm going to use this first one as a template to mark the rest. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut the edges off of this. It's just less sanding to do. But you can see here where shaping it with a sander really helps out, especially when you're going for the arched look. Now I'll just trace this pattern out on all of my shingles and get to work on that. And to mark the half shingles, I'm just putting two together and then tracing out the same jig. Makes it much easier. So once you have all of your shingles cut and shaped, now will be a good time to go ahead and stain them the way that you would like, if you're going to use stain. And now for the gingerbread jig. Now this is going to be a repeatable jig. So I'm just going to show you how I'm laying this out here. In a moment I'll show you one with all of the different measurements on that. That way you can screenshot that and repeat it if you would like. Again, the plans will actually come with one that you can cut out and trace. And again, back on the jigsaw. So this template is a repeatable template. So you can just make the small section and repeat it over and over. I'll show you what I mean. And here's another tip. Always keep some quarter inch, even if it's scrap around, just to make your jigs and templates. So this little castle looking thing actually makes awesome looking gingerbread trim. So here's one that I've laid out all of the measurements for you. So that's all that you have to do is screenshot this and duplicate it. So with your template made, find where you want your gingerbread to start. I kind of wanted a rounded edge to start with, and then that's all that you have to do is keep moving this template over, repeating the process of tracing it out until you get the end. And the board that I'm tracing this out on is part R. And this is what it should look like. From this side, it kind of looks like little mountains or something, but it will have a different profile from the other side. And back to the jigsaw. And this is the profile from the opposite view. Now it's starting to look a little nicer. So once you have your first board cut, since we're needing two of these, just put it on top of your second and trace the whole thing out. And now we have both of our gingerbread pieces. I keep calling it gingerbread. It's just kind of an old school term. Now let's make our roof boards. And we're going to be using boards O and P. So instead of going out and actually buying a wider board, I'm still using fence pickets. I kind of saved the ugliest material for this part. I'll just join these two boards together with pocket holes and we'll be set. It's not going to matter anyway because this is all getting covered with shingles. And now we've taken super cheap fence picket material and made a six and three quarter inch board. And finally, that is it. That's all the parts that we need cut for now. So let's go ahead and get those stained and painted up. Just like in any of our projects, this part is up to you. Get creative with it. Just like in this birdhouse, I actually stained the divider boards instead of painting them. But I'm still going back to the farmhouse white over black paint for the rest of the birdhouse. And the amount of distressing is completely up to you. You'll notice at the beginning of this video, one of the birdhouses was heavily distressed and the other one this one, not so much, but this is one distressed and the bottom one does not. So let's start putting this baby together. So start with taking your first divider H, the one that has square ends, 
and let's attach our parts A to the back. In the two sidewalls G, I will also be putting some nails and glue with this, just because I do not have any pocket holes joining it from the side. Now we're ready to attach our front part A. I will also be using some glue and nails for this as well. We'll finish up by putting our pocket holes in the front and our first level is done. It's starting to come together and looking good. And now we're ready for our second divider I. Now this divider will actually have the bevels on it. The remaining dividers will actually all have bevels. So I'm going to put glue down first and then I'll throw in some nails just to hold this in place. And when I get ready to put the nails in the front, I'm just using this little tool just to gauge out the depth. That way I don't shoot a nail through, but it can be done with a stick or really whatever that you like. A piece of scrap it does not have to be a fancy tool. And now we're ready for back wall B. And we're just going to be repeating this process. Now these are just two little four inch blocks that I found you know, it kind of helps out with the spacing whenever I'm putting all of this together. And like I mentioned, we will repeat this process for each of the different levels until we get to the very top. Man, I really wish I could work that fast. I could really get some stuff done. Okay, so you remember how we did not put pocket holes in part F? This is why. I'm just going to use some CA glue here. You can actually just use wood glue, but once you put the sides on, it's really not going to matter. It's going to lock everything in. And on the tips of these roof boards, I've put a 21 degree angle. I'm simply going to put glue down both sides and nail this roof board into place. And for the front facing edge, I'll use a straight edge just to mark it to make sure that my nails are actually going into wood and not shooting out the sides. Since I want my gingerbread trim to meet nicely at a point, I'm putting a 55 degree angle on each end. And to install these, I'll be putting wood glue on the edge, clamping in the place, and throwing some bread nails in. And this is where we're at. We're finally seeing this thing come together, seeing what it's going to look like, and it looks awesome. And now to install the roof, I'll be using 5 8 brad nails. It's actually the smallest brad nail that I know that they make, but I'll also be using some wood glue. I'm going to be installing my first run of shingles 2 and 3 quarters from the bottom of the roof itself. And this will be 3 full shingles. And for the rest of my shingle runs, I want 2 and 8 spacing for each one. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that out. So for the second run, if you'll notice I'm putting glue at the top and also glue where it meets the first. And this is going to be a half of a shingle, two fulls, and then another half. And now for the next one, we'll go ahead and do three full shingles. And we will repeat this pattern until we get to the very top. And notice on the half shingles, I'm always putting the flat edge out. And if you have a shingle to slide down while you're nailing it in like this, first put your safety glasses back on, the way that they should have been from the beginning, and then blame someone else. Where were you at on that one, Stickly? Okay, so just pull that off and fix it. Repeat, no big deal. Now your very last run of shingles will have to be cut down. As you can see, they're too long. I'm gonna recommend getting this measurement when you get to this point, just in case you get off a little bit during the process of putting on all these different shingles. And then once all of your shingles are installed, turn it around and repeat on the other side. And there you have it, a beautiful, gigantic birdhouse that is built literally out of nine fence pickets.